In this video, we look at an overview of integral calculus, and this is the first in a four-part video series on this subtopic. So this is part of topic five calculus. In topic five, there are two main areas. We have differential calculus, and now we have integral calculus. So this is the first video uh, involving this subtopic here. And I thought to start by just setting the scene of talking about what integral calculus is all about, particularly in the AISL course. It does extend further beyond this, but in the AISL course, integral calculus is all about finding the area under a curve between two points. And if we look at this diagram down here, we have this curve, this blue line. And back in differential calculus, that was all about finding the slope of this curve at any point. So for example, this orange dot here, we could use our knowledge of how to differentiate and then sub in the x value to find what is the slope of the curve or otherwise known as the gradient of the tangent at that point. So that's what differential calculus is all about. Integral calculus now is finding the area under the curve, although I don't really like using that word under. I, I think a better word is, is bounded. So the area bounded by this curve, and in this case, and the x-axis. So between the curve and the x-axis, between two points. So for example, this, gray sh uh, this green shaded region here is the area bounded by the curve and the x-axis between points A and B. And we call the left-hand point the lower boundary and the right-hand point the upper boundary. So we can calculate this area, and you can see this is a strange shape, this green shape. We don't have a formula for this. It kind of looks like a rectangle or maybe a trapezoid, but of course it's a, it's a curve shaped here, so we don't have a formula for this shape back in geometry. But we can now find the area of this shape using what's called definite integrals. Uh, there's two types of integrals. You have indefinite integrals and definite integrals. But this course, it mainly focuses on definite integrals. So this area here reads, okay, I'm going to find the integral, this symbol here, this long S stands for the integral between points A, lower boundary A, and point B, upper boundary B, of this curve, which has the equation, in this case here, I just have Y, I'm not sure what the equation of this curve here, and then DX, this stands for, I'm going to integrate it with respect to X, and this also tells us which axis uh, the, the bounding um, uh, is in relation to. So we're finding the area bounded by the curve and the x-axis, so we have dx. Now you may be wondering, well, big deal. Why do we want to find areas bounded by curves and axes? Look, that sounds a bit sort of arbitrary. What's the point of doing this? And that would be a good question. The reason is it's actually very important. Uh, I mean, th there's a few different applications depending on sort of how complex the mathematics goes. But in the AISL course, the main reason, and it's quite fundamental, is that there's a link between an original, say, function. So for example, here I have these two graphs here. I have the distance traveled in a car for a given number of hours and its derivative. In this case here, the derivative of distance traveled is speed. So distance is how many kilometers traveled and the speed is, well, how many kilometers is being traveled at any given time. So kilometers per hour. And there's a link between the two and I'll try to explain that now. So let's let's picture you, you get in the car with your family and you start here, you haven't traveled anywhere at the start. And let's say you travel on a straight highway and after four hours, I ask you, well, how far have has your family traveled in the car? And, and let's say you don't know the uh, equation that represents how far you traveled. Well, if you had this graph, you could you could, you could go up on the time axis, you could plot up here, and then find the corresponding distance traveled. And you would say, okay, after four hours, we have traveled 200 kilometers. And then you could probably figure out that the actual equation that represents how far you've traveled is 50 times T. So for every, uh, for every hour, you are traveling 50 kilometers. Well, let's now have a look at the graph of the derivative, the speed. If you're traveling 50 kilometers per hour, it's just a straight horizontal line here. Now, if I asked you, well, how far have you traveled after one hour? If you're traveling 50 kilometers per hour, you could probably intuitively say, well, I would have traveled 50 kilometers. Now let's, let's represent this on the diagram. After one hour, I can go up. I've created this rectangle here, which has a width of one and a height of 50. So the area under the curve 
for one unit on the horizontal axis results in a area of 50, one times 50, it's a rectangle here. Let's do the same now for four hours. So I go across to four, and this is the original question, how far have you traveled after four hours? Again, this creates this rectangle here. And again, I'm shading here on the graph of the derivative, not the original function. This rectangle now has a width of four and a height of 50. Four times 50 is equal to 200. So hopefully there you can see the connection that the area under the curve of the derivative gives the corresponding y value of the antiderivative. So this, this process of going from a derivative upwards as opposed to differentiating down, going upwards is called the antiderivative. So the area under the curve will actually correspond to the the vertical axis value of the antiderivative. And that's important because sometimes in exam questions, you'll actually only be given the derivative. And I have an example here from the question bank. In this question here, you're actually given the rate of change or the derivative on the vertical axis. In this case here, this is the uh, rain filling an empty water tank. So the vertical axis isn't the amount of water. It's actually the rate of which the water is entering the tank. Now the question says, how much water has filled the reservoir after one hour? So it would be a mistake to go to 60 minutes, go up, find the corresponding vertical axis, because this vertical axis isn't the amount of water, it's the rate of change, it's the derivative of the amount of water. So to answer question A, you actually need to find the area under the curve for 60 minutes. Okay, so that's a quick overview there, but just if, if you got a bit confused there, because it's a bit hard to wrap your head around the link between the derivative and the antiderivative, but if I want you to take one thing away from this video, is that integral calculus in the AISL course is all about finding areas under a curve between two points.